Happy Thursday and welcome to the New Birth Platform, wherever you are. If you're on our Facebook campus, greetings. If you're on our YouTube campus, we welcome you. If you're watching us from our app or from our website, we're so excited to be with you. You are tuned in to the place where our senior pastor is Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, and we are so humbled always honored and always grateful to be able to serve you all over the world. Listen, I need you to hit the share button right now. I need you to tag and text a few people and let them know that the Kingmaker, the pastor of internet and innovation is on with you and I'm so excited. We have an amazing weekend coming up because on tomorrow, Friday, May 21st, one of the most monumental days in the history of the world. Our senior pastor turns 50, can you believe it? And we're getting ready to celebrate all weekend long and we need you. If you're in the city, we're gonna be having a party. We're gonna have old school versus new school. We're gonna be playing spades. We're gonna be playing dominoes. We slapping the table this particular weekend and then we're gonna have an amazing celebration on Pentecost, which is 50 days after resurrection and God knows he could only ordain allowing him to turn 50 on the same day as Pentecost so we need you to pull up we need you to share we need you to engage we need you to worship we need you to give let me help you I am giving you a bonus session because I know we closed out the series on wealth and financial empowerment but you sweet people were so infectious with your statements with your inboxes telling us how much this session, this series has blessed you. We had the coin drop off this past Sunday and you invested in the kingdom by putting your spare change to the side. And I'm giving you a bonus session. So let's dive right into it. You know I have been on the series that I closed out last week called Investing in Your Ideas. And we went through a litany of different ideas, but I wanna show you how to do it. Many of you said, I get investing in these different forms of ideas, but pastor, how do I do it? How will I know that I'm doing it the right way? So our bonus session, I'm going to teach you today. How will I know? That's what we're going to call it. How will I know? How will I know that I'm doing the right thing when it comes down to my ideas? Pastor, I got all of these ideas. I want to start this. I want to try this. I want to write this. But how will I know that the investment is being done the right way? I'm going to only be in front of you a few minutes. I'm going to give you a few steps. Hopefully I can cover them all in this time frame, but I need you to take out your pen. Those of you who are savvy with your devices, go to the note taking section in your devices and let's get to work. I have been able in the marketplace, in ministry, and in the mainstream to take the ideas that God has given me turn them into profitable businesses, turn them into profitable consultations, turn them into proper, prow, uh, powerful and purposeful training and development, and turn them into powerful, purposeful, and necessary messages. And I'm gonna take what I've learned, uh, both in the academic world, in the spiritual realm, and literally because I put it into play and watched it work over and over again. And what I've taught people all across the nation on how to make sure that you will know that you have a solid idea. Let's get right into it. The first thing you need to do, if you're going to invest in your ideas and know that it is going to be effective and going to turn around for you, is identify the purpose. Identify the purpose. You know that it's my goal and duty in life to touch at least one billion people before I die and help them obtain their optimum level of purpose, greatness, and success. I see it all through the dynamic of purpose. Where you start is purpose. And you don't do anything without identifying the purpose by which the idea was motivated. And you've got to figure out where's the root cause of this? What am I trying to accomplish with this idea? Where is this motivation coming from? And once I know that, it can be pure, authentic, and it can be impactful. Your purpose is the key component to your success. Your idea spurns from the purpose that you've been designed to carry out. And if you don't do it, it never will get done. And this is the beauty of identifying purpose. It is authentic to only you. 
Did you hear what I said? It's authentic to only you. Nobody can compete with your purpose because it's yours. It has your fingerprint on it. It is customized for just you. People can try to duplicate it, but they will never be able to do it the way God has designed for you to do it. Once you identify the purpose, you now have the template for being successful. It is important that we see this throughout the context of the Bible because Jesus' purpose is to seek and to save those who are lost. And once he has identified his purpose, his plan, his process, and his idea shifts. You start to realize that for 30 years, Jesus is operating outside of his purpose. He is a carpenter because in this time frame, what your father did, it would be immediately passed down to you. Because his earthly stepfather is a carpenter, Jesus becomes a carpenter. But in his 30th year, he realizes I'm going to do something different and I'm clear now that it is not just about carpentry, it is about ministry. And what he now helps people to understand is that this word carpentry is dialect and it is translated into the word tecton. He is an individual who masters dealing with the hard stuff. So it's a purpose even in his wrong. It's a purpose even in what he's not doing and the idea that he can deal with and master that which is tough, that which is hard, helps him in his ministry. He has identified the purpose, so he only helps and identifies and heals people that have situations that are problematic. He heals the sick. He gives sight to the blind. He raises the dead because he has identified his purpose. So you will know that your idea is worth investing in when you are clearly able to identify your purpose. So number one, identify your purpose. Number two, how you will know that your idea is worth investing in is that you will specify your target. You specify your target. Remember that your target is never general. It is always specific. I'm gonna say that again. Your target is never general. It is always specific. And you've gotta narrow it down to the lowest common denominator. You've gotta realize that your message, your purpose, your call, and your focus is specific to some. Help you understand, you will never find Rolls Royce at the corner or the intersection with Cadillac and with Ford and with Lincoln Mercury. Why? Because their target is not the same. You won't see them doing commercials on Fox and you won't see them doing commercials on NBC. You will not find Rolls Royce with Rolls Royces lifted up on a riser in a local area and on the writing in the window, it won't say $1,500 rebate or 10% APR financing because that's not their target. They're gonna focus on people that subscribe to the Rob Report, people who have a certain net worth. And once you specify your target, your idea becomes more noteworthy. Understand, let's use Jesus again. Jesus always in his ministry operates in small towns and villages. He goes in areas that are mountainous. He goes in areas where he can walk through and allow people to navigate with him. Why? Because in going no further than 200 mile radius, his entire three year ministry, focusing in on the target that it affected people in small villages and towns allowed him to spread the word more effectively. It was purposeful. It was not accidental. It wasn't coincidental. He specified his target. And once you specify your target, you will never be discouraged when people who are not your target are not focused on your messaging. Again, when you specify your target, you know that your, vo your voice is called to a specific group of people. If other people come, so be it. But your focus in your idea in making sure that it's properly investable is specifying your target. So number one, you gotta identify your purpose. Number two, you gotta specify your target. I hope this is helping you. If this is impacting you, hit the share button right now. Tag somebody that you know has a great idea, but they need to be able to know that it is what they need to be doing and it's investable so that it can be impactful.
So number three, I want you to do this. Write this down. You got to grab this. Highlight the benefits. Highlight the benefits. This is important because when you highlight the benefits, you now make people more interested in the idea because an idea has to be beneficial to more than just you. Let me drop something on you. If what your idea is encompassed around is only is only you, it's not a God idea, it's just a good idea. Most times, if not always, God gives you ideas for others. It will impact you, but it will specifically impact others in a major way. What you've been called to do is impactful to people that don't know they need what you're offering until you identify it as a need. It's called an unperceived need. They now realize in dealing with you that without you, it is not gonna be, it's not gonna be necessary or it's not gonna even be capable for them to obtain their highest level of success. So you tell them what the benefits are. You tell them how this thing should work on their behalf. You tell them that these are the things that my idea benefits you through. We talked about Joseph several weeks ago. And when Joseph gets an opportunity to go before Pharaoh and interpret his dream, he now not only tells him his dream, but he shows him the benefits of allowing him and his ideas to be implemented in his kingdom. And now Pharaoh says, I think this is a great idea. It's worth investing in. And more importantly, we should let Joseph carry it out because he highlighted the benefits. Don't ever overlook the reality that God didn't just give you the idea. He gave you the ingenuity. He gave you the favor. He gave you the opportunity. And as long as you can let others know the benefit, the opportunity, the job, the space, and the place will always be yours. I want you to type on the screen, it's always mine. And I'll know because I have highlighted the benefits. Number four, I hope this is helping you. I'm totally enjoying it. Number four, create value. Create value. Because you gotta realize when you have an idea that's worth investing in, you've gotta create the value. Help you understand, people are not gonna know it is valuable until you tell them. You have to insulate it with value. You have to show the value add in dealing with you and incorporating your idea. You have to now show people why the time you put into it, why the education you've invested, why the moments that you laid up all night long trying to figure this thing out, why the experience that you have, why the times that you've been screwed over and been mishandled, all of that is going to impact them dealing directly with your idea and investing in what God has given you. you You've got to create the value because if you don't see it as valuable, nobody will see it as valuable. It's yours to identify. It's yours to quantify. It's yours to deepen and create equity within. It's valuable to you and it's got to be valuable to others. David is in a situation where he realizes his value. He sees the circumstance. He sees the problem. He sees the situation and he says, you know what? You are afraid even though you are equipped as army men to beat this giant. But I'm not afraid, you know why? Because I've looked at what I've gone through before I got here. I beat and destroyed a lion. I beat and destroyed a bear. And these sheep didn't even belong to me. I was equipped in moments where I was devalued, in moments where I was overlooked, in moments that I was minimized. And those moments developed me to have value here. And when Pharaoh and when Saul in this situation says that you're gonna be able to marry my daughter, if you kill this lion, this, this, this giant, you're going to be in a position to have your life live tax free and everybody that's connected to you will be able to live tax free. I'm going to give you a lottery ticket. That's a winning number. And now David says, I have created value in who I am. You've saw me as a musician only, but I now am going to create value as a giant killer. And because I know how to destroy lions and bears, a man is no problem. So I'm going to create this value in the fact that I'm the only one that can get this job done. Saul, you don't want to do it. It's okay. 
I have created value and you will know because you'll create value that only people will see because you identified that value. Number one, identify the purpose. Number two, specify the target. Number three, highlight the benefits. Number four, create value. Number five, I got 30 seconds and I'm out of here. Develop contingencies. Develop contingencies. Contingencies are plans that allow you to make alterations in the case that something goes wrong. Say it again. Contingencies are plans that allow you to make alterations in your idea in case something goes wrong. You need a plan B, you need a plan C, you need a plan D in case something doesn't go your way. Realize that Jesus does not feed people just one time. He fed 5,000 realized what went wrong, understood the dynamics of the disciples, understood the lay of the land, and then he goes back and feeds 4,000. Now, these are just the recorded times, but it is very likely, and I have no proof of this, but methinks that Jesus has now gone on a strategy of understanding that when I deal with people before I minister to them, if they're hungry, I need to be able to feed them because they understand the process. They are listening and more palatable to the message if I have another option than just that of preaching. I can preach to them, but I need to feed them. I need to send them away understanding that he gave me more than I bargained for. It's a contingency. If this doesn't go right, I'm going to tweak it. I'm going to figure out what went wrong, and I'm going to make it better the next time. And if you are going to know how valuable your idea is, you're going to need some other options because things will go wrong along this journey. Your ideas are not foolproof until you make them foolproof. And I believe that if you follow these five steps, you will know that your idea is worth it. I'm out of my time. I'm so thankful for yours. I pray that this session, this series, and this month has been a blessing to you. And we want to continually see what your idea is flourish into what God has called it to be. And I've learned that giving puts a stamp on the envelope of your belief so that God can turn around and bless you abundantly. And I'm asking you to sow a seed right now. If you wouldn't mind, the prompts are on the bottom of the screen. If you would sow a seed right now by going to any of our giving options and investing in ground that you know is a great idea. You see what we've been doing here at New Birth, and we ask that you partner with us, that you give here, that you sow here. On top of that, I don't want you to do this without God. Jesus Christ is still the answer for the world today. And we're offering Christ to you right now. God has need of you. If you click join newbirth.org right now, we're waiting on you and we want you to connect with us as we continue to move for Christ. And then more importantly, if you need prayer, just email us. Our intercessors are always available at prayer at newbirth.org. I'm excited. Thank you for allowing me to pour into you on a weekly basis. Join us this weekend. We got some amazing announcements. Don't go anywhere. I want you to know what's going on here in New Birth. I love you, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Have a drama-free free, and virus-free remainder of the day. I'll see you when I see you. Stay tuned for more announcements. Peace. Hey, New Birth. It's time for your video announcements. We are hosting a women's worship encounter, honoring women for forging new paths and reaching new heights. Join us online for Glass Ceiling Breakers on Thursday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. We will be blessed by the ministry of Pastor Kadisha Jenkins, who is a change agent and a prophetic voice for such a time as this. We have partnered with Uber to get more transportation options to our community. To help, Uber is offering $1,000 in new driver earnings for anyone who signs up using the unique web link. Please visit the link to sign up today. Join us online for our Emerging Generations Takeover on Sunday, May 30th at 9.30 a.m. Special guests include Willie Moore Jr., Elise, and Miles Caton. Emerging Generations has planned an unforgettable worship encounter, and you don't want to miss out on this exciting youth celebration. Text EG Connect to 71441 to stay up on EG activities. Our pastor is turning 50, and it's time to celebrate. 
Don't miss out on Dr. Bryant's birthday celebration on Saturday, May 22nd from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. on our campus. It will be old school versus new school, featuring a DJ battle, a dance contest, games, dessert trucks for your sweet tooth, and plenty of fun for everyone. The celebration continues on Sunday, May 23rd, where Dr. Sean McMillan will be ministering, and our guest psalmist is the anointed Peter Collins. As we honor our pastor's landmark celebration, we are asking everyone to consider being a blessing to this great man of God by bringing in gifts in increments of $50. Pastor Brian has led many initiatives since his journey began with New Birth by touching the city, the state, and ultimately the nation. Our pastor has shown that he has a true heart for the people. Let's show him our appreciation. Also, it will be Pentecost Sunday, the celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we are expecting a high time of praise and worship. If you're in need of free groceries, please come by New Birth on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Just pull up and pop your trunk. Be sure to tell your friends and family. Emerging Generations is having a graduation pull-up parking lot service on Sunday, June 13th at 9.30 a.m. And that's it for your video announcement.